All right, so uh, let's get into a little bit of uh, politics before we move on to some of the other things here. Actually, we're doing things a little bit, a little backwards because we usually end with politics uh, mm-hmm. section. But I think I think that the big story this week is actually the Chris Pratt Robert mm-hmm. De Niro thing going on. Yep. So um, the border situation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Little tiny story. Let's just, let's, just, <laughs> let's just throw it all out on the table there. I have liberal friends posting like crazy that Trump is separating families at the border and mm-hmm. everything, and that this is big new news and that it's it's Trump. He's a bastard. He's doing this. No other administration would ever do this in their life or anything. And uh, they're keeping kids away from their families mm-hmm. down at the border, right? Yep. Um, not true, first of all. Actually, uh, a type of policy like that started and originated, go figure, in the Clinton administration mm-hmm. in the 90s, which is a lot of where this stuff has stemmed, like the yep. uh, crime bill. Was it the crime crime bill that I think so. like, incarcerated like the black community above in, in crazy numbers? Well, right. you know, Hillary said they were super predators. Yes, exactly. So yeah. You gotta yeah. take care of it. <laughs> Until you need their votes. Oh then my gosh. then I, we're I, on. <laughs> I still can't believe that that super predators comment didn't come back and just play and play and play during that election. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that just shows the agenda that's, that's yep. being driven, right? Um, so, started basically during the Clinton administration and everything. And went through the Bush administration, went through the Obama administration. He actually notched things up a little bit. And now the articles, like, <clears throat> first of all, John Favreau. Mm-hmm. Is that how you say it? Favreau. 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 Above him. Mm-hmm. Again, what's with the Avengers? Social justice Avengers, you yeah. know what I mean? Except for one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he uh, did the first Iron Man. He was in Iron Man. He was in Swingers. He was mm-hmm. in... Um, what was the one the follow up one like that? Bunch of stuff. He was in oh, PCU. So good. Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw that. No, not that one. It's the college movie with uh, Jeremy Piven. No, but the, you're going. Was... You're wearing the shirt of the band you're going to see. <laughs> don't be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. What was the one after Swingers that uh, he starred with Vince Vaughn again? Didn't they do one of those uh, like um, couples retreat? Like yeah, uh, they did that too. Yeah, yeah but there was a, there was like a kind of a, a quasi sequel to. Uh, to swingers. swingers, yeah, yeah. It was, it was the well, same. Vince thing. Vaughn just got arrested, I think. What for? Like for like DUI or something like that. Something, oh, yeah. But, that sucks. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so so John Favreau, he probably he, watched two hours of CNN and just wanted to drink himself. <laughs> yeah, <to death. laughs> um, he is uh, not only is he a big Hollywood guy and everything, and did the first Iron Man, has been involved with the Marvel universe ever since. Yeah. But he also was a speechwriter. Yeah. Uh, for Obama. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I think it was two or three weeks ago at this point, he put a bunch of pictures out online showing um, kids detained, separated from their parents at the border, (laughs) and said that like Trump was a bastard and look what he's doing and stuff. Mm -hmm. Turns out these pictures were from 2014 and taken during the (laughs) Obama administration. His administration that he was a part of at the time as a speechwriter. That's pretty hilarious. I mean, that's that's some really. Is it there? Uh, is it? Chef is there. Chef was awesome. He was in Daredevil. <laughs> no, it was right after Swingers. Filmography. I don't know. Producer. Uh, actor, here we go. Um, so anyway. Yeah, he, you keep going. I'll, I'll he, re- he releases these things, and um, it, it's, it turns out to be completely wrong. Yeah. Right? And, he, and it starts this firestorm. Right. Mm -hmm. And the Democrats are really playing up this message right now because the midterm elections are coming and people don't seem to understand that. And the media has latched on to that as well, because if they push this message, they're going to get their party back into power as well. Right. So they're bashing and bashing and bashing. In the meantime, the Democrats didn't vote for a bill that would have ended it a couple days ago, three days ago. Today's Thursday. I think it was three days ago. Didn't vote for it because if they solve it now. They don't have a midterm election message, right? Yep. In the meantime, uh, Senator Ben Sass, who I have his statement up here, Senator Ted Cruz, Donald Trump himself and his wife are tackling this. He's calling for con- congressional Republicans to come up with an idea to end the separation of families at the border and everything. And the Republicans are actually working on it. Yep. Now, Trump is getting actually blamed for enforcing a law 
Isn't that what the law is there for? Mm -hmm. The law is always considered to the left a weapon to use against the right. Look at Obama and the whole scandal with using the IRS to shut down the Tea Party uh, groups that were starting up their their, uh, 501, whatever, the Mm -hmm. tax-exempt things and everything. Their groups. He was using the IRS to specifically target these conservative groups and shut them down, right? So Obama was using the law as a political tool. And it's always, you know, what happens? Why shouldn't you have a gun? Because police officers are there. They'll enforce the law. Yep. Enforce the law. Enforce the law. It's always about the laws until it's a law that you disagree with, right? So now Trump is enforcing a law that's existing that Obama notched up. And they will even say, well, yeah, yeah it was it was around during Obama. He wrote the law, but he didn't enforce it as much as Trump. What? <laughs> so Which one's not, worse? So he's not doing his job? Yeah, isn't yeah. he the head of the executive branch? He's supposed to be executing on things. <laughs> well, watch the language just, there. <laughs> yeah, <Jeez>. right. Oh. <laughs> but in this case, what is worse, actually writing the law and expecting people to follow through and enforce it, or enforcing a law that is your job to do? Yeah, you know, he wrote that law. Yeah, or that policy. That's that's bad. Yeah, that you can actually in your mind. Turn that around and say, well, he just wrote it. I mean, who cares if he wrote it? I mean, it's a law. You don't have to follow it. I mean, look at sanctuary cities. Again, and this is all in regards to immigration and everything. If a law exists and they don't want to follow it, that's okay. But if a a conservative says, I'm going to stop paying taxes because you're taking too much, well, you got to follow the law. Yeah. You're going to get arrested. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, come on. You can't pick and choose. Yeah. Right? You can't pick and choose what laws you're going to follow and which ones you're not going to follow. Because we can play that game. Yeah. We can play that game with you if you really want to. Yeah. Okay? Uh, anyway, so here's a statement from Senator Ben Sass. I think that this is really important. It's a little long, but I, I think it's worth going through here. It says, um, Maine Nebraskans this week, he's a Nebraskan senator, by the way, this weekend asked me about the kids at the border. Here's a short version of what I told them. This is a bit oversimplified, but these are broad brush, brush strokes of how I understand the situation at present. Number one, family separation is wicked. It is harmful to kids and absolutely should not be the default U.S. policy. Americans are better than this. Number two, this bad news policy is a reaction against a bad old policy. Oh, bad new policy is a reaction to the bad old policy. The old policy was catch and release. Under catch and release, if someone made it to the border and claimed asylum, whether true or not, and most of the time it it wasn't true, they were released into the U.S. until a future hearing date. Many folks obviously don't show up at these hearings, so this becomes a new pathway into the U.S. Essentially, they disappear into the system. Or, no, not into the system, Mm -hmm. out of the system, right? Three, catch and release. Combined with inefficient deportation and other ineffective policies created a magnet whereby lots of people came to the border who were not actually asylum seekers. This magnet not only attracted illegal immigrants generally, but also produced an uptick in human trafficking across our border. We now also have some limited evidence of jihadi recruiters spreading word about how to exploit the southwestern border. Okay, this is something we've talked about in the past as well, Mm -hmm. okay? I'm going to go a little off topic here because I think this is really important in regards to human trafficking. The one charity that we donate to on a regular basis, and we donated a couple hundred dollars last month, is uh, OUR, Operation Underground Railroad, okay? It's an abolitionist, uh, abolitionist charity that helps... Uh, slaves. Mm-hmm. And s- there are more slaves today in the world than ever before. I think in combined history. And, and I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. There, it's Sex slavery is a massive, massive problem. Kids disappear in other countries and parents never see them again. They think that they're dead. I, I, in, in, my, in, in my head, I think it's worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be a, a child sex slave. So you donate to this organization, and they send ex-military people in to actually save these kids and, and shut down these organizations and get them arrested. But the fact of the matter is, okay, we've talked about this in the past. Do you remember the rape trees I've talked about? Uh, yeah, vaguely. Okay. If you want to know what's going on at the border, things that they are not telling you about, Google search rape trees, okay? What ends up happening is, uh, these smugglers, and usually they're drug cartel uh, warlords and stuff like that from Mexico, will take families and take all the money that they save up to get them across the border, and they will smuggle them to the border, and then they'll get to the border and they'll tell the fathers and the brothers, 
uh, I'm sorry, but we can't take you. We got to take your, your wife and daughter, but we'll make sure that they get across safely and everything. Or in the case of boys, they take the little boys over too, okay? They smuggle them across and they get across and they say that the payment wasn't enough and they rape these 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 people okay? mm-hmm. that were depending on them for safe passage into the United States, whether legally or illegally. In this case, it's definitely illegally, right? Mm-hmm. And a rape tree is the the smugglers pick out a tree on the other side of the border and after raping the individual will take their underwear and throw it up in the tree and it's like their trophy tree Mm -hmm. okay this is the kind of sick crap that's going on at the border okay and the reason why i bring this up is because the border situation is a hell of a lot worse than what you think it is Mm -hmm. okay if you think that the worst thing right now is a cage situation and the foil blankets and everything that's bad i don't i haven't heard one person say that those kids deserve to be separated away from their parents and treated like that mm-hmm. okay no matter who was doing it it happened under both presidents i'm not equating it to make a, a comparison case a compare and contrast it happened okay mm-hmm. shouldn't be happening shouldn't yep. have been a policy but if you think that's the worst thing that's happening is that and the food that they get, which mm-hmm. you probably weren't getting <laughs> that kind of food across the border and everything, you're sickly wrong. Okay, mm-hmm. Things are a hell of a lot worse on what's going on the border and how they're getting across and everything. Okay, These people are trafficked, and once they get in here, it doesn't get much better. Okay, You think you got into American soil? What happens? Okay, What happens when you get here? You got to fly under the radar, right? So you're taking under-the-table jobs. You're getting paid cash. What happens when you get paid cash when you're not part of the system? The person that's running the business or the corporation or whatever it is that's running you and working you has an opportunity, and it's often taken, to run you as a slave. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because if you step out of line, if you question how much you're getting paid, which is way less than minimum wage, they're going to report you to ICE. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now we've created a slave system in the united states a trafficking system in the united states working is one thing you also have sex trafficking here in the united states as well yeah it's a sick reality and that's what organizations like OU are out there to stop okay but we've created this situation because we don't have border security we don't turn them away when they get here and when they do get in here they have to fly under the radar out of fear that they're going to be kicked back out and they get themselves into worse situations yep okay now, let's, uh, uh, well, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so number four on here. Human trafficking organizations are not just evil, they're also often smart. Many quickly learned the magic words they needed to say under catch and release to guarantee admission into the United States. Because of this, some of the folks showing up at the border claiming to be families are not actually families. Some are a trafficker with one or more trafficked children. Sometimes border agents can identify this, but many times they aren't sure. So again... Sometimes you think that they're being mm-hmm. separated away from their families. That might be the best damn thing that they got going for them is mm-hmm. a separation. Because maybe it just took them away from a sex trafficker that thought that he could get them across mm-hmm. and, uh, and use them yep. as sex objects. Okay? Mm-hmm. Who knows? Any policy that incentivizes illegal immigration is terrible governance. But even more troubling is that catch and release rewarded traffickers who knew that they could easily get their victims to market in the United States. Number six, this foolish catch and release policy had to be changed, but changing from catch and release does not require adopting the wicked family separation policy. Again, he's saying this is not good policy. Uh, The choice before the American people does not have to be wicked versus foolish. Number seven, the administration's decision to separate families is a new discretionary choice. Anyone saying that their hands are tied or that the only conceivable way to fix a problem of catch and release is to rip apart families is flat wrong. There are other options available to them. The other options are all messy. Given that some overly uh, prescriptive judges have limited their administrative options, but there are ways to address this and are that are less bad than the policy of family separation we've chosen. Number eight, this is the second last one. There are many senior folks in the scene in the administration who hate this policy and who want to do something better. So he knows what's going on behind the scenes. He knows that there's yep. people that want to fight this. Number nine, but some in the administration have decided that this cruel policy increases their legislative leverage. This is wrong. Americans do not take children hostage, period. 
Okay. Yep. So let's talk about what's actually happening on the border. Why are these kids being detained and separated? Okay. Uh, the the charge from the left is that a lot of these people are actually coming across the border and are asylum seekers. Yeah. Okay. First of all, what's the best way to keep the families from being separated? It's easy. Come in legally. What's another way? Don't come at all. I mean, yeah. if you if you cross illegally, you're going to be separated. Yeah. You've 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 committed a crime, and not the children. They're innocent in this, okay? Mm -hmm. But you've committed a crime. You commit the crime, you do the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry, like. Uh, there was a great art uh, post that someone put up. It was just a regular post from a, a person who said there are hundreds of thousands of kids that are separated from their families when they're in active duty military. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's one way to look at it. You're talking about anyone who commits a crime that goes to prison or jail. They're separated from their family. That's what I said to you on your yeah, post the yeah. other day. I was like, you know, where's all the outrage for every rapist and drug dealer and murderer that doesn't get to spend every day with their kids because they're being prosecuted or put in jail. Yeah, listen. Do it the legal way. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the point I'm trying to make here is yeah. the fact that what a lot of people don't realize is the fact that in any of these countries, and we're not talking about just Mexicans, you're talking about Guatemalans and everybody down Honduras, there. Honduras, I think that girl's Honduran. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're talking about these people. In all of those countries, there are U.S. embassies that they can go to, claim asylum, and those embassies will take them in, not separate their family, and run them through the process of getting them into the United States. In those countries. Yep. Okay? All the way down South America. They've traveled all the way up through Mexico to go into the United States illegally. Okay? Mm, yeah. Now, let's say they get to Mexico. They get to the border, right? And they think, oh my gosh... If I cross that border right there, I might be separated from my kids. Do they have other options? Yes. You can go to the Mexican embassy or the mm -hmm. United States embassy in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Claim asylum. They will not mm -hmm. separate you. They will process you. Is there another thing that they could do? Yes. You can go to one of the checkpoints at the border. Claim asylum there. Guess what? You're not going to be separated. So the question is... The deeper question that the left is not asking themselves right now, why are they doing this illegally then if they're truly seeking asylum? Why are they doing it? I don't personally have the answer to that. It could yeah. be a multitude of reasons. But if they are truly seeking asylum and they're trying to use that as the, I don't want to say excuse because maybe they, maybe they feel that's the only option for some reason. That's what they were told or something like that. I don't mm -hmm. know, you know? But there are many opportunities to seek asylum that will get you into the United States legally without separating your family. Yep. So why are they doing it this way? Why are they crossing illegally? I think that, that it comes down to over 90% of them are using it as an excuse when they get Yes. Of, I mean, of course. I mean, it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's All of these people are coming illegally and they did just say, well, we're seeking asylum. Like, that's all you have to say to, to try to yeah. semi-legitimize yourself. Yeah. You know, and also, if, if they're going through the trouble, le seeking asylum from something so horrible, like, especially if they're, like, in, in Central America, working their way all the way up, probably a very dangerous journey. Oh, yeah. If they're seeking asylum, it's got to be something pretty awful that they're leaving. If they make it, whether you're separated from your kids or not, you got to be happy you made it. <laughs> You, could, you you both got to be better off than where you were coming from anyway. I would think so. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, you, you see these these kids, which is terrible, You, uh, you these kids, the, the old pictures and newer ones or whatever. As awful as that is and as awful as it looks, it's probably a thousand times better than where they're coming from if they're going through all the trouble to get here, knowing what the possible repercussions are. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other thing I said, too, is... It, for the for the people that are using their kids as a shield from the law, yep. then you probably shouldn't have your kids anyway. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that child services has taken kids away from families for less than that. Oh yeah, absolutely. For for legal citizens, I, I was know. just looking up real quick here. Um, one of my friends uh, is his wife is from Nicaragua. Yeah, right? and apparently. <laughs> 
you know, we're focused on Stormy Daniels. We're focused on this board. Well, actually, Stormy's out of the question, out of the picture now. She's probably pretty upset, but this, uh, this, the little girl has taken over. Yeah. Uh, you know, the would you say Honduran? Yep. This little Honduran girl has stolen the spotlight away yep. from her that she's not getting as much coverage as she was before, that they're not focused on that. But you have that. You have the Russia story. Mm-hmm. What, where's that at right now? How's that investigation going? Yeah. It's been going on for over a year. Have they come up with anything? Well, I think that uh, I think that the left and the media has latched on to this. You Is know, it, because yeah. they've got like, we've been working Russia for like a year and a half now, and nothing's coming of yeah, it. Yeah. All right, we got something that might work. We got something better, so let's just focus on this now. Yeah, and uh, yeah. great point. Okay, so I want to I want to feed off of that in a second. Mm-hmm. But apparently, down in Nicaragua, there's uh, they went from a good system, uh, I want to say capitalist system mm-hmm. that they had going really well. Yep. And a socialist took over, and the the country is in an upheaval right yep. now, a revolution going on down there. And they actually got family members out of there. Mm-hmm. It's really bad. There's a lot of people dead down there. Is that making the news? Because no. all I know about it is from what he's telling me. Well, why would it make the news anyway? You know, America is just filling up with Bernie Sanders and Bernie Sanders supporters, and everybody loves socialism. Yet, no one from here. How, how come you don't hear actors saying that they're going to go to Venezuela if Trump oh, wins? Yeah, you know, <laughs> like uh, yeah. or uh, and all the ones that said they would leave there, uh, they leave didn't, yeah. and they weren't going to Venezuela or any no. other socialist country. No. Why are the people from socialist well, at countries least not the, not the uh, white socialists? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're trying. <laughs> well, <laughs> but why are they? It's a uh, long joke. Yeah, they they're nobody from here is trying to go no. there, but they're all trying to get here. If capitalism's yeah. so bad, why are they trying? to come here exactly and then they want to change the system yep they want to change the system into the type of system they're trying to that flee. they're escaping from yeah. yeah exactly makes no sense not the refugees yeah, yeah. I, I i seriously think that a lot of uh a lot of people that come here realize the potential of what used to be the american dream i think that they see through movies and stuff like that the american culture and I think that's a way that a lot And there of are a lot of hardworking people. I mean, even oh some of the gosh, jobs that yes. you're doing, they're incredibly hardworking people. I think a lot of them are trying to give a better life for their families and, and trying to live out the American dream. And they they kind of get here and then kind of get brainwashed by yeah. Democrats into thinking that they're the ones that are going to give it to them. Yeah. Not them. That not them doing it themselves, which is the conservative way right. of thinking. Yeah, exactly. You know? Um, but it, I want to kind of feed off of what you said before about like what the media is covering and everything. What my liberal friends don't seem to realize, and I'm not bashing them on this. Like, like again, uh, one thing I want to make very clear. Are you for families being separated? No. I'm certainly not for families being separated. No. I don't know of anybody that's like, yeah, those freaking families. Separate those kids. Yeah, yeah. Separate like, those little bastards. Put them, put them in a cage. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I'm not hearing that. No. I'm not hearing that. I don't, and I truly don't believe that Trump wants to do that. I don't, I no. don't think anyone no. wants to do that. Yeah. So, okay, so there's that. What my liberal friends don't seem to understand is this whole outrage culture that's going on right now, right? And it's the fact that they have to be they have to be outraged yeah. immediately by stuff, you know? And the media on both sides, I'm going to tell you, Fox News does this too. Uh, they will they will feed you surface-level stories that get you either really upset or really angry, right? And then they let you fester it, mm-hmm. right? What was it funny? <laughs> I'm just thinking of something okay, semi-related. We'll that in a okay. Okay. Yeah. So they let you fester in the yeah. surface-level stories, right? Mm-hmm. But they don't dig deeper, you mm-hmm. know? They don't... They, it's, it's like I said to my friend. I'm not going to mention his name or anything because I, I truly love the guy and everything. Um, if he identifies as a guy. Um, <laughs> never know. We don't know. I don't we don't assume. Him. We don't assume. <laughs> um, I said to him in a private message, like, listen, you are super liberal in your postings, you know? But never. You, you, think, you think you know me as a friend that you would think I maybe am interested in politics on the other end, right? You've never contacted me from my side of the story on what I think on a certain topic before you post, you know? Because as soon as you post, it's F Trump, F Trump supporters, uh, Republicans are evil bastards, they're fascist and everything else. No matter what's going on, it's like instant anger, right? Mm-hmm. Never once has he reached out to me and said, hey, hey. Like, this is really effed up. What the heck is going on with your side? Before I post, I want to know what I'm talking about with what your side is is thinking about this. Reach out, because I'll tell you something. If you get our side of the story, 
We're probably not going to come off as evil bastards like the media is making it out to be. The media wants you to think that we are feeling a certain way without ever talking to us about the way that we feel yep. about a certain topic, right? Mm-hmm. So they feed off of the surface level stuff, they get you outraged, and then they let you go. Yep. And it's dividing us as a nation. For you sure. Know? We are super divided right now because we can't. We have an inability to talk to each other. Everything offends you, you know what I mean? You're, everybody is so easily offended. You're walking on eggshells all the time. You don't even know how to address a person anymore mm-hmm. because you don't know what pronoun they're supposed to go by or anything. Yeah, yeah. You, you got to walk on eggshells with absolutely everything. And it's it's given us into a culture where you have more of a um, more of an opportunity to express yourself online in anonymity, mm-hmm. right? To get your point across because say things that you really want to say or in the case of like some of my friends, whether you're on the right or on the left, if you have a majority uh, of of your friends are in a certain political party, you're talking to an echo chamber. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're not doing something courageous like we're going to talk about with Robert De Niro. You're a coward. Okay, if if you're saying something and, and your friends are just echoing it and hitting yeah. that mad face and thumbs up and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and you're not getting an opposing opinion, that's not courageous. You're yeah. not you're not really uh, pushing the boundaries of anything. Yeah. Okay, you're speaking to your own crowd, and no one else is jumping in. Yep. Okay, you're not getting any other opinions on the matter. So it's it's just ridiculous uh, what's going on with the media and everything. Um, but. Okay, wait, what was it that you were laughing about? No, I just, anytime anything comes up with immigrants and immigration, I always think about the, uh, uh, what, what's the daughter's name, Ozzy Osbourne's daughter? Sh- um, Not Sharon, Kelly. Kelly Osbourne, when she was on The View, that famous clip of hers. <laughs> Oh, I forget. Uh, yeah, well, if you don't want to let immigrants in, then who's going to clean your toilets, Donald Trump? And then <laughs> and then everyone else on the panel is just like, ooh. Ooh, yeah. Like, literally, that's what they did. And I just think that's... I, I, like Because we were talking about how, like, I honestly don't think Trump, like... You know, Trump's always painted that he's a racist, he's this, he's that. He's like, I don't think he's a racist. And I just no. think of her... <laughs> oh, yeah. Who's going to clean your toilets, Donald Trump? <laughs> Ooh, oh, yeah. Man. No, no, no. And then the frantic panic of recovering from that. Yeah, yeah. I just, I Here, can't help but laugh every part time. Here's the conversation I had with my yeah. friend in regards to Trump and everything. Like, he hates Trump. Yeah. I, I mean, if, look, if you're on the left at all, if you're even, if you're even a blue dog Democrat, like the yeah. old Reagan Democrats and stuff like that, like, you probably hate Trump. Actually, no. As mm-hmm. a matter of fact, some of these blue dog Democrats and Reagan Democrats yep. uh, actually voted for Trump. I think that's what pushed him over because mm-hmm. they were just so sick of the Clintons and everything. But... If you lean left, you most likely feel strongly one way or the other. You either hate him or love him, right? Uh, while you're catching up on personal things there. No, no, no. <laughs> I was looking for a post from Victor <laughs> oh, that, okay. that was uh, that is related. Oh, of course. And I think I got. I think my response got me unfriended. I'm just noticing now the add friend button is is there. <laughs> so he yeah. defriended me a long time. The ago. tolerance of the left. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, he wants to, uh, and we're not going to say his, his full name or anything, yeah, yeah. but like it's people like that that, yeah. you know, if you're not directly interacting or anything like that, they if they are defriending you, they want to stay in their echo chamber. Yep. They just want to hear their opinions bounce back to them, and they don't want to be challenged mm-hmm. on it at all, okay? But one of the things I was talking about in this conversation with my friend is the fact that Trump has a lot of allegations thrown at him, right? Yeah. You know I was adamantly anti-Trump mm-hmm. when he was running, okay? And it ended up being the Supreme Court that pushed me into yep. voting for Yep. It. I've learned to really, really like his policies. I still don't like him as a person. Okay? Yeah. And I think his the way he talks and the things he says, I've gotten to the point where I know it's to push buttons, and I laugh. Yeah. Like, the things that used to piss me off that he said... It's just making me laugh because he's saying things to get a reaction to show the absurdity of the other side. Yeah. You and I, I mean? you know what? I bet I would like him as a person. Like if there was Maybe. no politics. And yeah. Even when you think about before he was into politics, oh, all the he was friends with all the celebrities. Yeah. All yeah. The ones that hate him yeah. And he was always him. funny and everything. Yeah. And, Which and, goes uh, to show you that they were all using him. Oh, too. yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, but here's the one thing I was talking about. In regards to President Trump, if you want to talk about the levied allegations at him, he's a racist. Okay, where's the evidence? Are we talking about the border situation where he's actually enforcing a law that was pushed through by Democrats in the 90s, right? Yeah. Uh, what else can you really point out? Mm-hmm. 
I, I really can't think of anything. You know, a lot of a lot of people. Probably on the, the will worst say, thing he's ever done was the asshole countries comment. Yeah. but that's not even. And that's that's no, mild. No, like if, you know what? If, Let's go off of that comment for a second. Yeah, yeah. For a second, because if we're talking about immigration, why are they seeking asylum? Yeah. It, they must not be leaving a great country. Yeah. I would think they're probably leaving an asshole country. And how many of these outraged liberals, especially the white ones, have talked about an inner city neighborhood being an asshole? Yeah. Yeah. I'm absolutely. sure. Yeah. Oh, and I've been thinking about that a lot the last couple of weeks, actually. Uh, if you were to ask a liberal, and you can try doing this, um, what cities in the United States you would feel most threatened walking through? Mm-hmm. And it, that they're doing bad economically. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Los Angeles, San Detroit. Francisco, Detroit, Chicago, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City. Um, those are the big ones. Seven, seven big ones, right? Mm-hmm. Who, who's been running those for decades? It's clear as clear as butter. <laughs> show me, show me a liberally run city in the United States that has succeeded. That has like a budget surplus. Yeah. Who takes care of the homeless population? That is thriving. That's thriving. Yep. How can you not look at that statistic in the United States and say, okay, liberal policies are not working? Seattle. Yep. We're going to talk about Seattle tonight with the head tax that they are trying to push through. Okay, it's coming up very mm-hmm. shortly here. These cities are failing. Yep. And they're failing because of the crushing weight of liberal policies. How can you not look at that and think to yourself? Well, you know what? I should second guess this economic liberal policies and how they work. Because obviously the cities are it's not it's not like it's not like a bunch of Republican citizens in the city elected a liberal leader. Right? These are all people that were willingly putting their own kind into office thinking that it's gonna get better and have done so decade after decade. And it's not working out. It's actually worse than not yeah. working out, okay? It's insane. Uh, you need a friendly hug, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Genesis. Um, so the fact of the matter is what we were talking about. We were talking about the border situation and everything. Oh, uh, we were talking about Trump and allegations levied out. Now, he's a sexist. Okay, the grabber by the whatever comment, that was 12 years before he, he got into office. That is, that, that drives was me. was shoving cigars in him in office. Like, literally <laughs> in the office. Okay? Cigars in him. Okay? So, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just yeah. throwing it out there. You know, if you're really going to talk about a sexist pig being in the office, yeah. like, using the Oval Office for that kind of stuff, you were about to elect his wife. Okay? Yeah. Um, by the way, he elected more women, or uh, appointed more women than any other yep. administration before him to high positions yep. in the uh, administration. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about gay marriage? First uh, candidate ever to... So the 10th? No. Uh, he doesn't. No. no. He doesn't, he doesn't the, like gay marriage. Right? The, he's the first ever... The, say this again? ...candidate for president to openly support gay marriage. But after he got in, right? No. After he got elected? Before he got in. Before he got in? Yes. Now, obviously, Obama was for no. gay marriage. He wasn't? No. Obama Hillary wasn't? wasn't. What? Yep. No. Nope. That isn't and and but they are now. Oh yeah, they are now. Well, it must have been well, what changed their minds? Votes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's 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 insane. He's and what do you know what he said about transgenders in uh, while running? Yeah, he they, they can use my bathroom, I don't care. Yeah. Well yeah. they asked him straight out because they thought this is the gotcha question. Mm-hmm. This is a big topic right now, transgenders and everything. President or uh, uh, Donald Trump. Candidate Trump. Candidate Trump. If a transgender was to go into your Trump hotel and wanted to use the bathroom that they identify with, would you let them? Yeah. I love the trannies. <laughs> they can use whatever bathroom they want. Totally cool with me. <laughs> he's he's you know, along those lines. Pretty much a tranny word. Uh, but he said, yeah. I don't care. Yep. It was it was basically that simple. Whatever. Yep. He's like, <laughs> and they will use story. He got up story. Uh, at a some kind of he rally. Held he held flag. the rainbow flag. Yeah. Who would have ever thought it's, a Republican would do that? Unbelievable how we can use that the media uses stories to twist a narrative. And I can see my liberal friends posting all the time that he's a bigot, he's a sexist, he's a homophobe, mm-hmm. all this stuff. And you look back through the history of of who he is. And it doesn't show that. Sexist? 
Is he a pig sometimes? Yeah, but you know what? Guys talk What like guy that. isn't? What I, I, guy yeah. hasn't said something that I mean, you would regret? I would. I would caught. never be able to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, yeah. you, you know, uh, do I do it much anymore? No, no. you know, I I uh, had my literal coming to God uh, <laughs> moments and everything, and I still say some whacked out things and everything. But the fact of the matter is, is like everyone does it. And excuse me, but you can't sit there while you have your. Uh, nose deep into the fifth book of Fifty Shades of Grey and start calling him a sexist. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like, yep. come on. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I, so, that still drives me nuts that any time that's ever brought up his comments, that they never bring up that that was said 11 or 12 years before he ever oh, even ran for like president. It was, it was yesterday. It was his campaign yeah. bus. He yeah. was on a campaign bus. Yeah. He was already a president. He said that in the, the the bus was parked in the White House parking lot. So the new narrative, though, while uh, the people on the right are bringing up the fact that Obama and uh, others have been doing this, have gone with this policy on the border, separating children from families and everything, is that Obama didn't do it. Mm. Well, I don't know how that's possible when those pictures are from 2014 yeah. and literally showing that. But okay, I'll go with you. Mm-hmm. Obviously... President Obama was sympathetic to the kids, right? Like, he wanted the immigrants to come here. Open border policies, no. I forgot to throw that in there. Did you hear about the DHS secretary? Mm-mm. Or whatever, that she was eating at a Mexican restaurant? Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard about ch- that. The, the yeah. Socialist Party of America yeah. uh, were chanting at her to get out and everything. Well, anyway. anyway. Uh, no, no borders, no laws, yeah. whatever, all this stupid crap. At a Mexican restaurant, at a Mexican yeah, restaurant, yeah. that's pretty funny. God forbid. <laughs> so you have all this stuff going on. Obviously, Obama during his presidency would have been very sympathetic to illegal immigrants, right? Like mm-hmm. he would just, hey, get to the border, we'll let you in, right? Well, let's take a clip at look, look at clip number one. The issue is not that people are evading our enforcement officials. The issue is that we're apprehending them in large numbers. And we're working to make sure that we have sufficient facilities to detain, house, and process them appropriately. While we intend to do the right thing by these children, their parents need to know that this is an incredibly dangerous situation. And it is unlikely that their children will be able to stay. And I've asked parents across Central America not to put their children in harm's way in this fashion. Okay, so there you have it. Obama himself, at one point in time, said, do not come to the border, especially with your kids. You're putting yourself in harm's way, and you're definitely putting your kids in harm's way. And they're probably not going to be allowed to stay here, right? So he's enforcing the law. Mm -hmm. Was this a one-off incident that he mentioned this? Not really. So let's take a look at the next clip. You mentioned immigration. There's a humanitarian crisis on the border. Some of your critics have said you have to speak out more directly to the people of Central America and say, don't come. If you come, you will be deported. Well, we actually, we've done that. The problem is, is that under current law, once those kids come across the border, there's a system in which we're supposed to process them, take care of them until we can send them back. So is, process, is your so message what don't come? Oh, our message absolutely is don't send your children unaccompanied uh, on trains or through, uh, through a bunch of smugglers. That is our direct message to the families in Central America. Do not send your children to the borders. If they do make it, they'll get sent back. More importantly, they may, may not make it. So, okay. So there he said, absolutely, do not send your kids yeah. across the border. Okay, we will send them back, right? This is a George Stephanopoulos, uh, another one that was uh, kissing his butt throughout the whole administration time and everything. Okay, I think we have a clear message from Obama, right? What about our would-be, what happened, <laughs> potential president that didn't make it twice now? Let's see what Hillary had to say. We have to send a clear message. Just because your child gets across the border, that doesn't mean the child gets to stay. Should they be sent back? They, well, first of all, we have to provide the best emergency care we can provide. We have children five and six years old who have come up from Central America. We need to do more to 
provide border security in so southern Mexico. They should be sent back now. Well, they should be sent back as soon as it can be determined who responsible adults and their families are, because there are concerns about whether all of them can be sent back. But I think all of them who can be should be reunited with their family. OK, so not only is she talking about sending uh, immigrants back, mm-hmm. but she also put a very strong message in there about increasing border security. That's weird. Yeah, Isn't right. Isn't that what Donald Trump is getting flack for all the time? Yeah. That we're increasing border security? It's ridiculous. It's hypocrisy. Yep. It's it's faux outrage from the left to push an agenda because we're going into midterm elections. Yeah. That's all this is. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't care about the kids. As a matter of fact, I, I can't show it tonight. And I'm not, not going to show it. But one of, uh, one of the friends of mine that I graduated from high school with... She's extremely liberal in her in her politics and everything. She put together a campaign uh, in coordination with a charity uh, to. It's kind of like the ice bucket challenge, right? But it's going about a different way to raise money for the children. Was she in the comments of that post? Yes. Yes, I saw her. I saw her. Yeah. yeah. Um, and by the way, I have to point this out. If uh, you won't see it because it's on my personal profile, her comments and everything. Very civilized discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, she laid out the facts that she sees. I laid out mine, and she wasn't coming at me, calling me different names, demeaning me, my character, my points of views, or anything. Like that's the way we're supposed to be acting as a Mm -hmm. society. Okay, like I'm going, I get worked up on the podcast here and everything because this is what we're talking about. You know what I mean? We're trying to have fun. We're trying to make humor of things. In situations like this, we're trying to explain. That you're not getting the whole story because there's so many different angles coming at this type of thing that it's just inconceivable that you're getting a small portion of what's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but she handles herself great. Yep. And I see her getting a little overboard on the liberal stuff when she's interacting with other liberal friends yep. and her mutual friends. But if you're going to interact with someone that's conservative, mm-hmm. she she's a model example. My point being, she's setting up a charity... Uh, a charitable thing that's going on right now. I have to look deeper into it because I'm finding some connections within the higher levels of the organization to things that I don't necessarily like. But the the end goal is good, right? Yeah. It's to ha- help send money down to the border to get these kids uh, probably better food, shelter, uh, clothing, activities for them to do and everything like that, any possible legal counsel and stuff, which, okay, I get that. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? I'm for that. My my problem right now, and I have to do deeper research, I'm working, I think it's Thursday, and I've put in probably dang near close to 60 hours as it is already in my work week. Yeah. Um, the problem is I have to do some more research on that because it could end up being that the parent organizations that are tied into this are tied to the Southern Poverty Law Group that have labeled people like David Barton and um, uh, the Alliance Defending Freedom as hate groups. They would, they would definitely label me as a hate group or a part of a hate organization yeah. or something yeah, yeah. like that for speaking on conservative principles. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I believe in the Constitution and the Bible. You know, yeah. I'm a hate group yeah. automatically. So I don't like the fact that if I send money to this organization, it may, again, I have to do the research, it may end up being that I'm supporting an organization that in the end is going to turn right around and kick me in the teeth for my political views and religious views. You yeah. know? If that's not the case... I am certainly going to release the information in regards to her charity because I do believe, like you said, that these children should not be separated from their families. And if there's mm-hmm. anything that we can do to help them, we should. Yeah. As a matter of fact, one of the radio sta- uh, radio programs I listen to is Glenn Beck. I'm not ashamed of that. Mm-hmm. I know some of my friends are extreme haters of Glenn Beck and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But guess what? Back in 2014, when those pictures were taken, it may have been from his trip down to the border. Okay, he went down to the border, saw the situation, saw the families that were separated and on his program mentioned it and said, we need to do something for these children. They sent truckloads down. They raised three million dollars from conservative, a conservative radio audience to help out these families on the border. Okay, so you want to talk about Republicans ignoring it? False. Look into it. We were the first to step up. Okay. How many times also do we have to point out that the most charitable people are normally conservative Christians? Absolutely. Like, I think one of the... Yeah. Um, 
I can't say for certain because you never know. Yeah, yeah. But if you were to take a look at my tax form or whatever on charitable giving and compare it to my most outspoken liberal friends, I'm guessing they're kind of like Joe Biden. Three <laughs> percent. Yeah. You know what I mean? If that. <coughs> and mm-hmm. Look, especially during tough economic times, I can understand you not giving anything. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to tout that we need to be taxed more so that the government can give more to these organizations and help out people yep. and advocate for that, for them to steal my money that I earn and allocate it to resources that I may feel that isn't necessary. I'm not talking about the kids here because yeah, yeah. I know that's going to be com- the conflated message. I'm talking about millions of dollars going towards salmon mating research. <laughs> okay? To, to uh, tunnels for turtles under rail, uh, roadways so that they don't get smushed. Okay? Like there, like there's apparently... <laughs> like, how do you direct the turtles to the tunnel in the first place? I know, right? So, oh, crap. They missed the tunnel. They go right up. <laughs> it's like, like they, it's got the little, they got the little stuff. circular eyeglasses and they see the sign. Oh, I gotta go this way. <laughs> yeah. It's all this stupid stuff that's like... Uh, Oh, it's just it's just ridiculous, you know. You didn't even tell me that this fell down. I thought that's how you put it. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it just drives me nuts. No. You know uh, that when it comes to charitable giving and everything, they they don't advocate for charitable giving. They advocate for the government to take more money from you to take on that responsibility. Yeah. As a whole, it's a collective versus the individual yeah. mentality. 